Well, hi there. See if I can get more light on this situation. Sorry, guys. Thank you for putting up with our slightly later than normal start. I had to wrangle a lizard. Sometimes we have to do things on their schedule. But uh, I appreciate you all being here so much. And let's see, I, I wanted to talk to you guys about a few things uh, right up front. Uh, one of them is I'm, I'm having all kinds of video ideas. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I also want a lot of feedback from you guys about, you know, things you'd be excited about seeing. Obviously, you know, we've got our top five videos and our head to heads and our uh, best pet various types of reptile videos. And we're going to always keep doing those. But like, you know, a long time ago, we made a video about science. And I told you shortly thereafter that I had a much clearer way to conceptualize science even still, though I stand by everything that was in that video. Like, I think that's really important for you to understand about sort of the mystery of science. But as far as how science actually functions, um, and never in the history, uh, at least in my lifetime, has the understanding of the general public of how science operates been so important. And so I'm kind of like, I kind of want to make that sort of a video for you guys. Um, there's just, there's an awful lot. As far as I'm seeing somebody suggesting a, a reptile room tour, we will do one uh, once the reptile room is built. You know, right now I've sort of got two deconstructed reptile rooms and uh, you know, uh, we're, our ba my basement's just never had lighting and stuff that would really work for a room tour, but we're, we're building the, the Clint reptile room, but it's, you know, as you know, it's been sort of on pause. However, I'm looking to try to get it as some level of operational here in June. So uh, we'll, we'll start doing something. Maybe, maybe we're, we're trying to get our internet working there too, so that it's decent. Cause then, you know, maybe we could do some video uh, room tours and things. So, so we have a lot of ideas like that coming up, but a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. And, and I'm excited to, to hear your ideas going forward. Um, today with us, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, at the end of January, Jason and I went out to Nerd. Right at the end of our time there, Jason was eaten by an alligator. And since then, we've been simulating him with an AI. Uh, you know, it uses Jason's voice from the past. Um, but anyway, uh, this is Jason. I don't know if I've been showing you this, but you know, that, that this is what Jason looks like now. Uh, Jason, you want to say hi to everybody? Very cute, Clint. Very cute. See, isn't it spot on? Can you guys hear him all right? Keep talk a little more. Talking, talking. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Jason clear to all you guys? Who is Jason? Who is Jason? Jason. I don't know. Who, can they hear me? Can Can you guys? Okay, so you can hear Jason clearly. Uh, I just saw a question. Who is Jason? And and. Jason is the reason that Clint's Reptiles as a YouTube channel exists. Um, I, I, you know, Clint's Reptiles, we, my, my, my wife and I, uh, when I was in graduate school, we started a little company called uh, Clint's Reptile Parties, where, you know, I would go and I'd do uh, little outreach reptile presentations at schools and, and homes and police stations and fire stations and, you know, places like that. Um, you know, and that that was just a little a little business we had. That's where Clint's reptiles originated. But Jason uh, is a, a great friend of ours. So so uh, there are three families that that we all make these videos together. And Jason was the one that suggested creating a YouTube channel. And, and so uh, you know, which is something I would have loved to have done for a long time. But I don't have like any video editing. Or creation skills and you know so as much as I would have loved that like it was just outside of what I I could do and and Jason was willing to learn all of that and and so he you know he brought us all together Michelle who's who's the third part of the third family so it's, so it's Will and Michelle and uh, Jason and Karen and, and me and Leisha we're we are the the six people who are Clint's reptiles and, and it was actually Jason's idea to create the channel. Jason was, was the original video editor. 
Uh, now his his wife Karen helps a tremendous amount, and so does Michelle, who also does our our videography. And you know we're we're all just a big team on this. But Jason has been you know for a lot of our live streams, and he's that voice that you're always hearing in our videos. And he was a wonderful person, and we really loved him. And it was so tragic the alligator thing. Um, but we are grateful that at least we have some semblance of Jason still with us today. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thanks, Clint. Yeah, you betcha, Jason. I mean, uh, AI Jason. Yes, clearly. Yes. <laughs> I've also got Leisha here today in case AI Jason falls falls through. Uh, she's here to back us up because she's wonderful. Um, but let's see. Do we have any questions just yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we definitely do. Oh, we right. A super chat. This is the first super chat of the, of the stream. Super and chat number is. one. So, yeah, push it. Hello? I, I, I lost you there for a second. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. So, Keegan Day says, I'd love to see more. Uh, see some more amphibian videos. You'd love to see some more amphibian videos. I'd like to make more amphibian videos. Uh, plan on them in the future. I'm actually considering getting some amphibians in in the nearest future. So uh, that would be awesome. My, uh, I'm seeing uh, somebody's been asking, am I a church? Uh, am I a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints? Yes, I am. Uh, all of us are, actually. Yes. Uh, so let's jump over to Patreon. Patreon. Uh, Zenia Coleman asks uh, the, the question that everybody wants to ask, and that is, can we have a reptile room tour? Also, thank you for answering my question. The last video, you're stinking rad. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we will definitely do a reptile room tour sort of as soon as there is a reptile room to tour. Uh, you know, we've we've got... The reptile room, as it is currently, uh, you know, and and starting starting this summer, really in June, I'm gonna get to start really doing some serious building in there, and I'm really excited. So we can show you the under construction reptile room, and once it is quasi complete, uh, we can have a a a better tour. Uh, let's see. Uh, Amy Plants Novich. Uh, says if you happen to discover a new lizard that would uh, what would the common name be for it oh so a new lizard well a lot would probably depend on what it looked like so let's think let's think what Leishy, what does this lizard look like I've, I've created I've discovered a new lizard what does it look like it's green and blue with purple behind its ears. Okay, it's green and blue with purple behind its ears. Uh, I would call it Sosaurus. That, that, see, that's this is our Latin name stuff. Okay, so the uh, green and blue, purple behind its ears. So it would be the, the purple-eared uh, Clint Lizard, because why not? <laughs> Clint, there. Clint, well, Clintosaurus was another suggestion. I like that one. <laughs> Good. Uh, our friend at North Exotics sent us a super chat. Yeah? And super chat? Thank you. He says, there we go. There it is. Uh, he says, your thoughts on reptile eyes and infrared. Wow. Infrared. Um, so reptile eyes are awesome. Uh, there are a lot of different types of reptiles that have different types of vision. You know, chameleons have some of the most bodacious eyes. Gecko eyes are also stinking rad. A lot of a lot of the nocturnal geckos. So, cat eyes, or those long slit uh, eye eye uh, pupils, those are really common with uh, nocturnal animals because a uh, the long pupil can dilate much larger than a circular pupil can. So they're better at night. But a lot of geckos don't even just have a cat eye. They have it where it's sort of made of a number of little diamonds that all expand into one big pupil. But during the day, when the pupil is is you know as small as possible, it looks like a row of little diamond 
pupils, which is stinking rad. As far as infrared goes, some reptiles can see infrared, but not with their eyes. These would be with the loreal and labial pits on uh, boas, pythons, and vipers. They actually detect uh, infrared light with those, which is heat, and and the way that they the way that they detect it, it goes to the visual centers of the brain, and so they effectively see infrared. Now, uh, infrared would be wavelengths. So, like we can see from red to violet, those are the wavelengths of light we can see. Infrared is outside on one extreme and ultraviolet is extreme on the other. And a lot of reptiles can see ultraviolet light with their eyes, uh, which is why some lizards will absolutely lose their mind the first time they see you out in natural sunlight. Uh, Gus Gus did this to me because you look completely different when he can see you under ultraviolet spectrum. Good stuff? Perfect. Perfect. Hey, uh, I just want to say to GR, they are prone and I think it was uh, Mitchell, uh, where'd it go? Mini chat. Uh, I think it was Mitchell something. Uh, uh, or Michelle Kelly. There you go. But the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're claiming to still be alive. Well, that is great news. That is great news. Okay, so reports are in. Jason may have survived his experience at nerd but uh he isn't actually here in my house at the moment maybe we're just social distancing J jason oh well <laughs> i have met a chinchilla they're uh, neat let's see so let's, let's jump over to our patrons at patreon patreon uh one of that I, I guess we should mention that one of the perks of being a patron at Patreon is that they get to ask these questions, and it's nearly a guarantee that we're going to read them. So, <laughs> yay! Uh, so, uh, Julie, uh, the join, uh, asked, when dealing with animals, especially when breeding animals, there are bound to be the occasional deaths, no matter how good you are. How do you feel that these deaths affect you and what self-care measures do you feel help you the most in these times? That is a phenomenal question. And I'm actually really glad it's been brought up. Uh, this is, this is about, you know, how, how do I deal with the deaths that happen? Like when you breed reptiles, you know, or, or just when you keep a large number of them, sometimes they die. And, and, and this is something that I think I've actually been considering making an entire video about this topic because I think it's one of the things that we don't talk about. Uh, and, and it's something that is real. Um, so there, there's a couple different things there. Well, you know, one of them is that when you breed organisms, some of them, just because of their genetic makeup that they get from recombination of genes from their parents or any mutations that might be new, some percentage of them fail to thrive, which is just a nice way of saying they die quickly or slowly, but they, they die. And it's, as far as we can tell, virtually unavoidable. And, you know, and you know that this is sort of an unavoidable thing to happen to organisms because never in the history of the world have humans had more technology or effort that they're willing to put into keeping other humans alive. And yet we still lose babies all the time. It, you know, it, it, and it's obviously horrific when it happens with, with humans, and it's, it's horrific when it happens with other animals as well, but it does happen, and it's something that I think people that don't breed them themselves are not exposed to at all. They don't, they don't see that side of things, and they don't know about this. And it's honestly, it's, it's something, I, you know, I think about a lot when it comes to talking about, like, spider ball pythons, just because... I think a lot of people are completely unaware that no matter what you breed, a large-ish, I mean, not, you know, not like a majority or anything, but a significant percentage of them fail to thrive for one reason or another. And, and uh, you know, and it's, it's nice when you're just on the I buy pets breeder side of things because you're usually buying the ones that did great. You're not buying the ones that didn't and you don't have to see that. You don't have to deal with that. Um, but, you know, the other thing I want to point out is, 
animals do die sometimes. Um, you know, even even when you're giving them great care. Uh, you know, for example, you know, humans humans can live to be like 120 years old, but some people die of natural causes when they're 10. And it's devastating when it's humans and it's devastating when it's animals. And sometimes it isn't because you messed up. And sometimes it is, right? And 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 if it is, you know, hopefully you view that as a as a learning experience. Hopefully you do everything that you can to not make those sorts of mistakes. But we are all learning and and sometimes we do make mistakes. And and so figuring out how to not beat yourself up too badly, I think is really important. You know, you, 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 it's, it's okay to feel bad because you've lost something and you've lost something that you love. Right. And so it's, it's perfectly natural to grieve and you should. And if it is because of a mistake that you made, you darn well better learn your lesson, right? You better figure out what did I do wrong? How do I prevent this from ever happening again? Cause you can't fix the past, right? You can try to, you can try to avoid that happening in your future. If it does happen, you darn well better learn from it so it doesn't happen again. But then you've got to find a way to carry on, right? I mean, it, it is hard because you can get so attached to these animals and you can work so hard and you can love them. And, you know, it, it is a devastating tragedy. But I, I think one of the biggest things is you can't live your life where you just constantly beat yourself up over your past mistakes. All you can do is learn from them and try to be a better person going forward. Anyway. Lovely. I like it. Uh, so let's let's jump back over to uh, to Super Chat. Super Chat? Uh, there it is. Uh, Ma, let's see. This is DragonFan0021. Uh, it says, my name is Hillary. I want to give you this to help you Oh man, it was a nice, a hefty, I should say, hefty uh, super chat. Thank you, Hillary. Uh, I want to give you this to help support your reptile room and to thank you for your valuable videos. My lizard family, Rexy, Potato, Jenny, and then Ferdinand and Taz say hi. I would love to see a video on, ooh, I'm going to need help with this, house, house galettes, chameleons. Oh, okay. What is it? How do you spell it? Oscillated? O-U-S-T-A-L-E-T-S. Uh, uh, I'll have to see that later. But uh, that that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much also for, uh, for supporting Ma us. Malagasy Giant Chameleon, I guess. Ma Malagasy Giant Chameleon? There you go. That would be awesome. And uh, I actually have had access in the past to some of the giant chameleons. I'm like, I got to cover veiled chameleons before I start doing these really obscure ones. But I agree. That would be awesome. And thank you so much. That is so kind of you to support us. This has been kind of a scary time because we're just not sure what the future looks like for the room. You know, even, even as I'm looking to open it up, I'm looking to do outdoor presentations for a while. So, you know, I'll, I'll bring the animals to outdoor places. It still might be a little bit before I'm allowing large groups into the reptile room, but I'm like, are there even going to be groups of people that are going to want presentations like this? So I, I don't know. And and so it's, I'm so thankful. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Yeah, we, we will. Once we're getting rock. All right. Uh, the next super chat, also a nice one from Alexandra Higgins. So, uh, she says, uh, could you do a video on Gila monster making a good pet? This is one of my favorite lizards. I see breeders that have them thoughts. Absolutely. I will love the day when I get to make a Gila monster video. It was actually on my list of videos to do when we were at Nerd. Um, we just didn't have enough time to do all of the videos on my list, but maybe, maybe we can go back there. Otherwise, um, they are, they're not legal to keep here in Utah because they are a native species. That doesn't mean that uh, we might, we may be able to get permits for them in the future if we have them at the reptile room. I've also, like, I'm from Colorado and I went to an expo there like a year and a half ago and there were Gila monsters all over the place at that expo. And that made my day because they're bodacious lizards and I would love to cover them. They're one of the coolest reptiles in the United States. 
I adore them. I, I would be super excited about that. I did get to play with some Gila monsters while I was at Nerd, but we just didn't have enough time to film that video. Awesome. Let's let's switch over to Patreon real quick. Patreon. Uh, Mar Marilyn says, Clint and everyone else who is involved with the live stream, how are you doing? Still okay despite everything going on in the world? Uh... Honestly, we are very fortunate here in Utah. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's it's hard for everyone everywhere in the world, but we've got a pretty low uh, a low number of cases here in this state, and that's meant that they've had to lock us down a lot less than in other states, which I think has been really good for our mental state. You know, I, I'm really glad we've been able to do these live streams because – I really feel for a lot of you guys. Like so, some of you are in places where you really have to be just in your house all the time, you know, and some of you might be by yourself, you know, hopefully with some reptiles, but by yourself in your house for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end. That is, that is hard. And so, you know, I'm, I'm really glad we can reach out to you guys. You know, I'm, I'm very blessed to be here with my family and we've had a lot of really quality time together. Uh, I also, you know, I, I, I have a lot of writing I need to be doing right now. Um, getting a lot of, a lot of the stuff from my dissertation published. And, and so I've been incredibly busy, which has made it, made the time go fast. At the same time, I would like to not be so busy for once in my life, but I'm doing all right. Jason, how are you doing? I am doing pretty good. Uh, you have a garden. I'm, I'm fairly more introvert than, uh, than, than some of the individuals in our, in our, in our team. Yes. Um, so I've been doing good. Uh, and I've been gardening to take up the time. So that's, that's my, my secret love is, is gardening in uh, the vegetable garden. I, I should tell you, Will, who you likely know from, it's either our second or third genetics video when he ate, uh, hot sauce, tons of hot sauce and almost killed himself. Today is his birthday, and he is the most extroverted of us all. So I think of all of us, he's been the one that has struggled the most. But I feel like he's starting to hit his stride as well and figuring out how to uh, find joy in quasi-isolation. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> yes, that's, that's pretty accurate. Uh, Clint, you should mention the fact that uh, our patrons in the thinking rad uh, here, you to hear a podcast. Uh, that is very true. In the lately the podcast with a video podcast. You should talk about that. And yeah, yeah. So the update of what's going on with that. So historically, so so this whole channel actually comes out of something uh, that Jason, Will, and I would do every week, which was we'd go to lunch once a week and just chat and be friends, and and we've continued to do that all along. We now actually record our conversation, and so our stinking rad. Uh, supporters uh, at, at Patreon, we've done a podcast for them every week, and so so they've been able to listen to our our little lunchtime conversation. We call it Lizard Lunch, and lately because we haven't actually been able to get together, we've been doing it over Zoom, and so Jason has continued on the podcast as as a Zoom video podcast, which is kind of fun. We talk about all kinds of fun things. So Will Will is actually a major part of our team. Uh, he's just the one that we probably see the least often, actually on the right. on the channel. Well, I have a I have a uh, lizard update I need to do here in a moment. Do we? Do you have one more question before that? Yeah, let's do let's do one more uh, super chat. Super chat. There it is. Uh, <laughs> this is Mondo Gecko Lutig, uh saying, "Is Peach Throat Monitor a good pet?" Oh. Yeah, they're all right. Uh, you know, I I I love monitors. It has been so. This is a question about peach throat monitors. I'm making sure you can hear. Okay, um, you know, are they a good pet? And I love the varanids, the monitor lizards, because they are so cool. I'm actually surprised. It's it's something I've learned is that monitor lizards are not as popular with the general public as they are with me. Uh, you know, and I and I think for a lot of people who are way, way, way into the reptile hobby, you know, monitors are amazing. And it's mostly their behavior 
that makes them so cool. And what has really, you know, pointed this out to me is the fact that, you know, like when we make videos about monitors, not that popular. And I realize, you know, monitors are actually not that spectacular looking. They're pretty, they're cool looking, but like, you know, there are definitely, you know, chameleons and, you know, even some of the agamid lizards and the anoles and, you know, they're, uh, you know, certainly, you know, horned lizards and things like that. They're a lot more spectacular looking lizards. It's the behavior of the monitors that makes them so cool. And so I love the monitors. The reality is, you know, they're very, very intelligent, very interesting, um, very active. And um, most of them are probably not really well suited to being pets. They're, they're okay, but they're kind of nervous and they're kind of dangerous and they're kind of quick and they're kind of likely to hide and they're kind of high maintenance and they eat a lot of food. They're, they're very active lifestyle. They need really hot basking spots. The peach throat monitor is an okay, uh, it, it's a it's a pretty good pet monitor and an okay pet lizard. Uh, you know, there, there are some that I would definitely say are better. The only monitor really that I'd be like, oh yeah, you should totally get one is an Aki. After that, they're all somewhat worse than Aki's. <laughs> and that is all. Tell me, tell me how you really feel about Aki's, Clint. Oh, I love them so much. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a lizard update. I almost I almost did an Aki update, but the Aki's at the room, and I didn't want to hassle him that much today because I, I I like I told you I've been extremely extremely busy, and so I've only been able to do a limited amount of work with with a lot of these lizards. I haven't been handling them too much. What where I am right now is I'm sort of on the tongue feeding trust building uh, stage, and and uh, that's where I am with my Aki. He's doing great. I love him. I just posted a picture of him on Instagram the other day. He's, he's putting on some size. But there's a lizard I got a little while back. And actually, I don't know which one of those two lizards I like best because I think the Aki is the best pet small monitor. And this creature is basically like having a small tegu. It is like a reasonably sized tegu. It's not actually a tea, though they're closely related. This is a lacerta. And you guys know a while back, I did a video on the jeweled Lacerta, and I absolutely fell in love with jeweled Lacertas. Fell in love. Hardcore, head over heels, and immediately my search began for a jeweled Lacerta. Um, this one I got uh, just a little while after that video, and... Uh, he was just he was just a hatchling when when I got him and uh, he's been he's been growing up. Um, I I'm not handling him much where I am right now as I tongue feed him. We've got a great tongue feeding relationship, and then I'll, I'll pet him while he eats his dubia roaches. Uh, but I'm I'm building building that trust with him. But here he is, and he is putting on some serious size. This is a giant. Jar. This is not his home, by the way. I just I managed to lure him into this jar with uh, a a few dubia roaches, and uh, he's eaten all but one. There's one hiding under that paper towel, but he has been just amazing. And you can see the colors he's starting to get in. I'm actually not positive if it's male or female because I haven't been handling it yet, uh, and it's still young enough that it could be a gloriously beautiful female. But it, the colors as a juvenile, we're leading us to think it might be, it might be a male. I love this guy. I, I'll be honest. This guy has actually been less shy than the Aki. So of the two of them, this one so far has actually been even more fun than the Aki monitor. He really loves food and, and we have some just spectacular experiences uh, feeding. So we're, like, we're, we're building a really great relationship, but he's still a little bit wary of me and I don't want to force handling on him. So that's why I'm not really handling him right now. Uh, I have heard of crested anoles, by the way, I see that question and, and they're cool. I, the anoles in general, probably more properly pronounced anoles, but I'll very rarely come up with that. Uh, they are one of the coolest groups of lizards. So gloriously beautiful. I've even seen some night anoles recently that aren't just green, but they've got all kinds of blues and yellows. And oh my goodness, 
the anoles lizards. There are so many species, so many wild species that are you know all, all throughout like the the Bahamas and and uh, all all throughout the islands down in that region. Amazing Central America. They're just anoles are bodacious group. Anyway, that that is my update on my jeweled lizard. If you guys have questions about him, feel free to ask, and I'd I'll, I'll let you know. I honestly like if you want to tegu, but space is a problem. This is a really phenomenal alternative. We actually have a head-to-head -head that's just that. It's it's the the jeweled lizard versus the blue tongue skink as essentially the best alternative to a tegu. And while the blue tongue skink is a, a very reasonable and awesome lizard to keep, this is way more tegu like. There's so there it's such just a little gus gus. Anyway. I remember filming that one and seeing the uh, the close up shot of the of the skin of the scales. It mm. looked like like little beads. It was so beautiful. Oh yeah, S spectacular beauty. And it's really coming in for this guy. I think you know if I reach in here, like I don't, I just don't want him to get away from me right now. Or or the video will immediately end with me just chasing around a lizard for the rest of the day. Look at that belly. So they are very closely related to the teid lizards, which is the group that includes the tegus. As, as far as small tegus, you know, the, the whiptails and the amoebas essentially are small tegus. And, but they're behaviorally not as tegu-like as this guy. These guys are just a little more bold and amazing. But I'm going to let him let him relax for a little. Uh, I'd be happy to pop him back up. I don't know what his name is. Um, I actually haven't. I am so bad because... I think, like, I really, the names matter a lot to me. So sometimes I'm like, I got to just let one come to me, and then one doesn't. So I still need a name for this guy. If you have suggestions, I would uh, love that. I, I, as far as knowing any local Lacerda breeders, I don't. I mean, I, I found this one on a Facebook group, I think. And I've, I've been so excited. I actually got two. I got one one from my, my friend Kevin. As well, we each ended up with one, and uh, they're both doing great. They're so cool. I love them. I love them. Anyway, back to questions. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Uh, we've got quite a few super chats so we need to catch up on. So two super, super chats. Chat, super chat, super uh, chat, super chat. Yeah. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our <laughs> Geo, uh, Gaio, maybe, uh, I think that gliding lizards could make a good video. I agree. I, I assume you're talking about like Draco Volans, the, the flying dragon lizard. And yeah, I would love to cover them. Until recently, I would have said, don't get these. Because all people did with them is they bought them because they're stinking rad, right? They're, they're stinking rad as rad can be. And then they watched them die. That is that is what you did with Draco Volans. But recently, just in the last couple of years, I've started to see people that are having a lot of success and are captive breeding them. And that is a game changer. So if I can find somebody local, which I don't know of anybody local, but if I can find somebody local or if I can travel to somebody that has them, I will definitely seize the opportunity to cover the, the flying dragons. Also, uh, you might be talking about uh, the flying geckos, which would be easier to cover. And I'm, I may cover them soon. Awesome. Uh, no, our friend uh, to Northern Exotics, uh, it says, going back to work now, so you stay safe. He's just letting us know that he's going back to work? Or that I'm going back to work? Yeah. He is. All right. So he's, he's signing out. Stay safe. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's see. Eric Nice Stool says, uh, you've done a carpet python video. Are uh, Rebels pythons similar enough, or could they have their own video? Oh, they could totally have their own video. So, so the, you know, last time that was just sort of on the jungle carpet python. Uh, Brettles pythons are, uh, I mean, they, there's a lot of similarities, but they're also just enormous. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 cover them. I've I've got a friend who's got a bunch of them. He breeds them, so it'd be pretty easy. Awesome. So our friend Amanda Cook, who I believe oh, absolutely, is this is. Home, is is uh, ramen reptiles. Absolutely, right? absolutely. That's ramen reptiles. One of my awesome. check out ramen reptiles art. Like go on Instagram or anywhere. Uh, amazing stuff. 
I love ramen reptiles. Carry on. Uh, she says, she sent the super chat and says, uh, I'd love to see a video on satanic loose tailed geckos or my favorite local species, collared lizard. Ah. Uh, looking to, looking for more info myself. Okay. I, I want to cover all sorts of leaf tailed geckos. If you've noticed, we haven't covered a single leaf tailed gecko yet. Uh, we've got actually quite a bit of access to Europlatus fembriatus. And so we'll probably cover them. In the nearest future, if I can get access to a satanic leaf-tailed gecko, which uh, I, I've, I've almost had the opportunity before, so it's not it's not like it's impossible. Uh, I will cover them soon. I also love the giant leaf-tailed geckos. Got to cover them. They're so leaf-tailed geckos are amazing. They're so cool. And then collared lizards. Yeah, definitely going to be covering those soon. I love collared lizards and leopard lizards. Who uh, talks about leopard lizards? So, there's so many species we, we still have. Chuck Wallace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, like, like every now and then we'll, we'll, you know, this last week we came out with a video about human children, which was, I mean, that, that was so fun. In fact, you know, we've never, I, I was looking it up. That video has more likes than any video we've ever created that until you get to one with like 175,000 views. Like, you guys. Loved that video and it was really fun and we enjoyed it. And, but you know, every now and then there's a comment like, "Oh, Clint's officially run out of reptiles." No, we haven't. Not even close. My goodness. I mean, like I, I look at things like veiled chameleons, like Bahamian anoles, long-tailed grass lizards, uh, you know, collared lizards and chuckwallas, and you know, just there's house geckos for crying out loud. Uh, white line gecko. There's just. So many, even stupendously common. We did fat-tailed geckos. I could do this all day. You know, banana pectinata that I love. You know, the the list of reptiles that we must cover is so much longer than the list of reptiles we have covered. I own reptiles we haven't covered yet. It's just preposterous. Uh, there are so many awesome options, and it is just a matter of time. We'll just keep plugging along. Yes. Uh, Do Merrill's boas for uh, crying out loud? We haven't we haven't covered Suriname boas or anacondas, man. Kribos of any kind. Jason, what are we doing here? We should be putting out like nine videos yeah, a week. Yeah. Quit all your quit your job. Quit all of our jobs. Yeah, the, now is probably not the best time to do that. Oh uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason Lara in our regular chat also mentioned one that we've been missing uh, that we have not covered that uh, is kind of significant and uh, that is the veiled chameleon yes yeah that was that was the first one actually I threw out on my list of ones that's just it's preposterous we haven't covered but here we are <laughs> arguably a veiled uh, let's see Rhino uh, rat snakes, yes. Let's do super chat. Super chat. Uh, Kirsten Kennerson says, "My daughter and I love your channel. What would you say is the best reptile for kids? She has a pixie frog and is great with it." That's awesome. We actually have a whole top five list of video of of uh, reptiles that are great for kids, and it's you know a lot of it's going to depend on the kid. I mean, my kids right now don't have their own pet reptiles. Uh, my son has been wanting one of my Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So I'll probably set him up with one of those pretty soon. Cause that's a good way to learn some responsibility, but it sounds like, sounds like your kid already has some experience and has proven themselves. So I would say anything on that list. Um, blue tongue skinks are obviously unbelievably amazing with whatever you get. You've got to accept the fact that you're going to have to be overseeing everything and that, you know, that, that lizard is probably going to outlive their time at home. And so at some point it may become your lizard again. There you go. Uh, let's jump over to our Patreon, uh, Patreon. Patreon questions. Uh, main man Greg says, if you could magically specialize in keeping and breeding one species of reptile, no matter cost or even it not being previously produced in captivity, what would be? Oh, 
man. I had just like so many things flood through my head. Uh, wow. One species I that I... I mean, I would think it would have to be something probably that's endangered in the wild that could go extinct, that that our captive breeding efforts could potentially save them. So things like the San Francisco garter snake is a, a very quick one that comes to mind. But other things that we just have struggled with breeding, like Skeltopusix, I would love that just because I think they're amazing. And if we had captive bred ones, that'd be incredible. Oh, yeah, two Ataras. Yeah, thank you for throwing out some good <laughs> suggestions. Two Ataras would be amazing. I would love that very much. Oh, no, I'm done. I'm done. I figured it out. I know what it would be. This is, this is, this is it. So all of a sudden, I can propagate these and have great success with them in captivity. Thorny devils. It'd be thorny devils. Yep. Yep. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. But th I don't know. There are other options that are probably just as good, but that's that's what I'm going with for now. Thorny devils. Good one. All right. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, over at Patreon, we have Jeff Bezos. Garrison Sims says, Chris, I think it's about time you acknowledge Dwarf Cayman. We need to know if the video is coming one day or if we need to keep mapping you. You went nerd, so I wonder if you made a video there. And if you didn't, it'll be, I'll be waiting to see a reticulated Python video you made instead. Ah, so you, you require that at the end of January, <laughs> I either made a Dwarf Cayman video or a reticulated Python video. And, um... Okay. Keep nagging me until until we make that video. Okay? <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, all right, let's jump over to Super Chat. Super uh, Chat? Let's see where to go. Okay, uh, Steve Johnson says, could you either go into now or do a video in the future on the best way to tongue feed and build a core with your reptile? Thanks for all you do. Yeah, I could do that a little bit now. And, you know, and we'll, we'll probably make a video on target feeding or tar target training and probably just general building of a, of a relationship with your animals. But yeah, that would be great. So Tongue feeding is really awesome. In fact, I've got some pretty long hemostats, which are uh, hemostats are for clamping off blood vessels. Uh, and so they, they lock, but they're, they, they're kind of look like scissors, but they're also tongues on the other end instead of scissors. And mine are, mine are a little bit curved and they're, mine are probably about a foot long, which gives you a little bit of extra distance away from your animal, which keeps you from being quite so scary. And uh, I'm going to order some two foot ones uh, mostly for that big snapping turtle, <laughs> but, uh, the, you know, I, I, I like feeding with tongs for a few reasons. So, so basically you can just throw, uh, feeders into an enclosure. There's a few issues. One is they're going to be down in the substrate. And so they're going to get substrate on them and that, that could be ingested and that's not ideal. Uh, they could also get lost in there. And so it's a little bit harder to monitor if your pet is feeding. And so if you feed with tongs, you know, one really nice thing is that you can see what they're eating exactly, that they're not eating any substrate, and you can see that they ate something. You know, especially if you're cohabbing organisms, you can make sure everybody's getting some food because sometimes one can dominate all the food and somebody else is starving and you wouldn't even know because the food's disappearing. But the other thing is I've noticed reptiles in general are very rarely concerned with inanimate objects. So they find tongs much less intimidating than they would find, say, your fingers. And I don't really know how they detect this necessarily, but like you can go poke a very defensive snake right in the head with a snake hook, and it usually won't care. But if you tried to go touch it on the head, it would care. Um, but the, the, the other thing I really like about tongs is feeding with fingers, not an idea I like, because I don't really want my, my reptiles to associate my fingers with food. I want them to associate my presence with good things happening in their lives, but I don't want them to see my fingers 
and then have them go for it. You will notice as you start tongue feeding them that they will often come and bite the tongues because they're like, oh boy, good stuff happens when these tongues are around. I'm going to eat the tongues. And, and, uh, and so you can build this good relationship. They associate you with good things. They'll come to you. And then what I usually do when I get to handling them, I'm doing this. I do this with my nitinol. I do this. I'm doing this with the Aki. I'll do this with the jeweled Lacerda. It really helps when you have a front injury enclosure for this. But I'll put my, my hand in the enclosure. If you keep your hand as a fist and don't give them fingers to bite, that can often be a really good thing. But I'll put, I'll put my fist into the enclosure and I'll, I'll get them excited about food with tongues and I'll bring them onto my arm where they walk under their own power onto my arm and then they can get a meal. And then a lot of times they'll just turn around and head back into the enclosure and that's fine. Sometimes they'll go and they'll hang out on my shoulder for a while and I actually have to lure them back into the enclosure with more food using the tongs. But tongues are an amazing tool for just building trust with an organism. If you're reaching in there like an eagle from above and grabbing them all the time, you're just a horrifying predator in their world. But if their experience with you is always associated with good things and you do it on their terms, that's awesome. That is awesome. And they'll love it. And you will too. It's the best. Awesome. Uh, let's do another super chat. Super chat. Uh, Larry Hernando says, uh, any vendor to buy a Cayman from? Love the channel. Yeah, nerd. Um, you know, my, my dream. Now, okay, let me start off. Probably don't buy a Cayman. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that is thing number one like uh a caiman is very reasonable as a baby and if they stayed like that like i would have like a whole room full of caimans um but they get bigger and uh they become a very very serious commitment and a very dangerous animal and so generally like don't don't buy a caiman because you're like i think i might want a caiman no you don't no you don't uh it would be so cool for a few days. And then you'd be like, all right, well, I've lived the Cayman experience. But um, if you're going to get a Cayman, get a captive bred Cayman from Nerd. Um, that'd be my recommendation. There, there may be other people producing them, but I've been following Nerd for years with their Cayman and they're incredible. And someday, uh, you know, a Cayman sort of, a Cayman, Caymans now and, and common snapping turtles uh, are, are two of my favorite animals in the world. Like I, like I told you, I have a hard time telling you which one is my very favorite, but those two are both in my top five. And uh, someday, you know, I may be in a situation where a caiman is right for me. It's going to involve, you know, I, I do crazy amounts of outreach. You know, a caiman probably isn't right for me just for my own personal viewing. But if, you know, if I'm if I'm sharing it with hundreds of people and using it to educate and, and inform people, I mean, you know, it would be incredible to be able to bring a crocodilian into my classroom, for example. There's so much we can learn just from being there. And when you see an animal like that, like questions flood your mind that otherwise you wouldn't even be interested in the answers. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I got to know about this. Uh, and so, so someday that, that time may come for me. And when it does, it'll be time to contact nerd. Say, Kevin, I'm ready for that Cayman. Let's jump over to Patreon. Patreon. Uh, Betty Morgan says, could you talk about parasites in domestic bred snakes, specifically nematode in ball python? My my low white pied had a bad case. The vet said that live feeding can be the cause. This snake refuses frozen. Uh, yeah, that's the gist. Yep. Well, you know, when you when you get a when you get a wild caught anything. It's almost certainly loaded with parasites. Uh, nematodes are one of the most common animals on the planet. Uh, there's a, uh, a famous biologist, last name is Cobb, I think N.A. Cobb. Uh, this is paraphrasing, but he said, if you, if you swept away all of the matter in the universe, except for the nematodes, our planet would still be vaguely recognizable. You could still make out all of the forests and trees and the roads and, and animals. And if you had enough knowledge of their nematode parasites, you would even be able to identify the species of all the organisms you would encounter. And that's if everything was gone except for the nematodes. Nematodes are stupid. 
stupendously abundant in the world. And so wild everything is going to be full of nematodes. And, and you know, oh. yo, yes. Are you not horrified enough yet, Jason? No, no. She says that she specifically doesn't oh. feed wild-caught mice. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not even talking about wild-caught mice. I'm talking about wild-caught any animal that you get is going to be full of nematodes. But now we're getting to her captive bred question and the thing with mice. So, you know, um, if you have a captive bred snake, it's been exposed to a lot fewer animals that might be full of nematodes and other sorts of other sorts of uh, parasites. And so your parasite load on a captive bred animal is way lower. And that's actually one of the big benefits to captive bred. But... Uh, you know, and if you feed them frozen mice, the freezing process will kill a large percentage of the parasites. And that's great. But like you said, if you feed live mice, you know, there's nothing you can do really to stop any parasites that are in those mice. And, you know, I don't know how well you know the background of those mice and what they've been exposed to and what they've been fed and, you know, where that grain comes from. You're just opening the door to a lot more parasites. In, it's not ideal. There's just a lot of downsides to feeding live. Sometimes it's necessary, but that's one of many downsides. So thank you for bringing that one up. That's a good one. Uh, another uh, patron question from Steph Reinhardt says, Hi Clint, how do you suggest newbies in the hobby gain experience handling reptile? Mm. My husband and I are considering adding a ball python to our family but feel like no matter how many expos we attend, we still have very little actual handling experience. Am I just being a nervous Nelly overthinking it? Thanks uh, for all, for any help here. Yeah. So um, you know that I too am a nervous Nelly when it comes to handling things. I just, and, and the thing is, like, I don't mind getting bitten by things. I don't like the quick movement. So I don't even like it when they strike, even if they don't bite me, right? Like, once they've bitten me, I'm like, oh, okay, that's over. You know, like, if they're even if they're latched onto me, it's like, well, okay, good. The bad part's over. Now all I've got is the pain and the bleeding. Um, it's just, I just don't like that, right? So I try not to even get them to strike when I'm holding them. And uh, we actually have a whole video on, on why I don't tend to get bitten by snakes that, that might help a lot. Some of it is just going to be to learn a little bit more about snake body language and, and, uh, you know, and also ways to communicate your intentions to a snake before you pick it up. A ball python is honestly a very good choice. That's not to tell you that it might not bite you because it might. It might. I, I've been bitten by a ball python. Um, Never when I was watching it, but uh, I got I got bitten by one uh, at Tinley that I, I wasn't watching it. I was talking to the owner who just gotten it and, it, and it bit me. It was probably showing me all kinds of signs of being afraid, but I just wasn't watching it to notice. And the, the same thing almost happened to me when we were at Nerd. Uh, somebody handed me a ball python. It struck at me but missed, which is a fairly common thing that ball pythons do, by the way. But anyway... Um, you know, there's going to be nothing better for getting you that experience than having a ball python. That That is a very, very good snake. But my biggest piece of advice is if it's staring right at you and it's extremely interested in everything that you're doing, don't touch it. Don't touch it or touch it on a part of its body far away from its head so it realizes it's not being fed. And then pick it up gently. Um, Kevin gave me a great tip of if it does look nervous to lift it up high. For some reason, that really brings down their, their stress levels. So there's a few. Ah, I see a, a clarification about a caiman lizard, not a caiman. Is it all right if I, if I tackle that one right away? Yeah, uh, we should mention before you do that, yes. that uh, Snake Discovery is watching and commented that she saw you get bit by one at Emily. That is true. Yep, that is true. Emily was there for that. Hi, Emily, by the way. Thank you for being here today. Uh, yeah, Emily, Emily was there when I got bitten by that one, uh, which, you know, I've only been bitten by a handful of snakes in my life. That was the most recent time I've been bitten. So good. I think that was bite number four for life, <laughs> which is pretty good. I mean, I've seen Emily on purpose be bitten more than four times in a video because I don't think she's as jumpy as I am. I am so jumpy about that stuff. I can't help it. I don't, I don't know what it is. It startles me. 
Okay, Cayman Lizards. I don't know a really good source for captive bred Cayman Lizards. There might be one. Uh, if you find one, please let me know because if I could get a captive bred Cayman Lizard and I had the monies, I would feel very differently about getting a Cayman Lizard myself. That is that is a dream reptile. I mean, that's honestly, except for the enclosure, you know, they're they're sort of almost like a better tegu. I mean, you know, their 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 behavior in a lot of ways is better than a tegu. You know, that they don't have quite as many weapons as a tegu, and uh, they're just a little more low key about the way they take food than tegus. So um, much harder to care for, a bummer because they're they're usually farmed and, and imports. But if you get a captive bred one, it'd be amazing. It's not like they're lacking for beauty either. Sorry, I'm back. I'm back, Mr. Jason. Let's jump to uh, Super Chat. Super Chat. Uh, Keegan Day sent another uh, Super Chat, which is awesome. Can we get an update on your Dumeril's monitor and how your trust relationship with it has improved, if it has? Yeah. Um, I'll actually probably be bringing him to the reptile room sort of soon. I, I want to build an awesome enclosure over there. Um. We, you know, that, that's one of my, my priorities for, for June, hopefully. But our relationship is so funny because he, we, we've built a relationship where he really likes me. And when he sees me, like he's excited that I'm there. And, uh, you know, he tong feeds spectacularly well. Um, the main thing that I have experimented with is so the front on his enclosure is a, a plastic mesh. So, you know, he can smell me and he can stick his tongue through there and everything. And sometimes I'll put my fingers up close just to see what he would do. And he would totally bite them. That is, that is what he would do. It's not a defensive bite. He just wants to try to eat me. Um, so, so I think he trusts me a lot, but I'm still at a stage where I don't trust him very much. Um, what I, what I need is once I get him over to the reptile room, then I can get him out in a big space, you know, in my, in my basement, it's a little bit cramped and there's a lot of places he could get lost or get away from me. And I wouldn't be able to get him back. Um, once I get him over to the reptile room, I can just let him run around and I'll feed him out of the enclosure. And, you know, I pet him all the time while he's, while his mouth is busy eating something else, because I know he would try to eat me. So relationship is much better. It's not going to be good if I try to grab him like an eagle, but as I can let him get used to my presence and, and we can build that trust where I trust him more, uh, things are going to get better. Usually do Merrill's monitors though are much nicer. Anyway, it's good. Awesome. Uh, Renee Bernstone sent a super chat. saying, will you cover any more European species? Yes, we will. In fact, you know, as you probably know and are referring to, you know, this is a this is a European species right here. And a skeletal music. You've actually got a lot of really well, I don't know if you're European. I, I assumed that. But uh there are a lot of really cool European species. And yeah, we totally will. Totally will. Awesome. Uh Northwest Fancy Feathers, which we've seen uh come up on our super chats a number of times, gave us a nice super chat. Uh, Thank you. Say, hey, Clint, good news with us here in Washington. Our Florida blue garter snake is gravid, at least we suspect. Ooh. Also, what are your thoughts on green killed lizards and yellow spotted night lizards looking to breed them? So, green killed lizards, is that the question? And yellow spotted. Uh, so, the question is. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm. And also yellow spotted night lizards. Okay, so for starters, I'm super excited about your garter. Those are beautiful, and I, I can't wait to hear if you get babies. Um, I, I'm assuming you've got at least a pair. Uh, the the next questions about, about those other two lizards, I don't know too much about them as far as how they are as captives or how they are to breed. Uh, I, I would love to look into it in the future, and, and if you're having success, I want updates because that's amazing. I'm excited for you. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Eric? Nice stool. Uh, said, do you teach at UVU or BYU? Uh, currently, I teach at UVU. Uh, I taught at BYU quite a bit in the past while I was a graduate student there. And um, so, yeah, that, that's where I am. Awesome. Another super chat from 
AEAE says, will you be at Chinui in October 10th and 11th? We will have to see what the world looks like in in October, but <coughs> sorry, I've decided to choke and die. Hopefully not die. I'll try to keep that uh, from happening. But if Tinley is happening in October, and, and you know if if the world's looking like a reasonably safe place, I know Jason and I have talked, and we would love to be there. So there's just a, an awful lot of unknowns between now and then. Um, you know, I, I, my, my personal thoughts as far as where we will be uh, in October. You know, uh, COVID nineteen is almost certainly still going to be around. Uh, hopefully, we'll have better treatments for it. You know, it's probably pretty unlikely that we'll have a vaccine by then or any sort of herd immunity. If you've watched our our video on COVID nineteen, you know, it's it's very likely we'll be anywhere close to to herd immunity. You know, hopefully we will know more about how to treat it and just how dangerous it really is. And so, you know, every day we all take risks. And so we're all going to have to do, you know, sort of an individual risk assessment as far as is this a risk I'm willing to take or not? And and so we will see where we are in October. But I would love to be there. I would love to be there in a normal world. I would say absolutely in this crazy world. We shall see. Awesome. Let's jump over to our Patreon questions. Benjamin Bramble says, when it comes to researching a new reptile, how good uh, and how good of a pet it makes, how do you get started and how do you know you have enough or the right information? That's a good question. So I would begin my search by Googling Clint's reptiles and whatever it is you're looking for. <laughs> I, I Hopefully what we're able to do for you is give you a fairly good idea what it's really like to have that, that animal. And, you know, and I got to tell you, sometimes, you know, you can do all your research and it's, it's different than you expected. You know, sometimes it's different, better. I would say more often than not, it's different, better. And sometimes it's not, you know, the, the perfect thing, well, there's no perfect thing other than like doing an apprenticeship. That would be an, a perfect way to get a feel for it. The other thing is a lot of times on social media, there are groups that specialize in that animal. Hop on there and start asking people questions and not, not the kind of questions you can get off of a really good care sheet, though one of the questions is what's a really good care sheet, you know, and if, if there's sort of a consensus in that group, it's probably a pretty good sign. Um, also get information from all over the place and on the things that they're all saying the same, that's hopefully fairly good information. Um, but the other thing is ask a lot of people questions about what it's really like having them. You know, like how, how do you like them? What did you expect it to be? What's your favorite thing about having them? What's your least favorite thing about having them? The, these sorts of questions to people that actually keep them can be priceless, absolutely priceless. So, so that's a great question. I'm glad you're doing that. As far as when you're ready, I mean, you're ready as soon as you know that you can provide long-term the kind of care that it's going to need, and you know that it you are excited to provide long-term the kind of care it's going to need. You know, it, it, if it doesn't excite you, if you're like, I guess I could handle that, um, don't get it. Don't get it. Get it because you're super excited about it. Brings you joy. All right. Uh, Patreon. Patreon. Mag Maglio says, did you name the turtle yet? I love beans or beef. Beans or beef? I like it. I, I haven't <laughs> arrived at a final for sure. I'll probably do a poll maybe today to see what you guys think, though. At the end of the day, I might override the poll. Uh, you know, I, I, I still really love Chunk. You know, his truffle shuffle is just spectacular. But there are a lot of other great names that have been proposed. I know Alicia has names that she prefers to Chunk. Yeah, um, but Chunk is doing great. I'll give you a little Chunk update. Um, ooh, because uh, he's he's eating great. Um, and you know, and he's eating on things that are not moving around. Like I, I've been giving him things like uh, little bits of watermelon and stuff like that. Um, just you know, so I, I think if I if I threw a bunch of fish in there or or a frozen mouse or something, he'd do great. Um, but I was, you know, I'm he's he's also chunky. 
So I've, I've, I've been not trying to feed him too much, but I want to make sure he's eating okay and, and used to captivity. For a while, it seemed like stuff was disappearing, but I, I couldn't see him eating it and I couldn't hear him. You know, snapping turtles are suction feeders and, you know, it's fast and powerful and usually you can hear it and I could never hear it. Well, you know, I, I finally was able to watch him eat and he's a pretty, he took the food really gently. Uh, you know, he just kind of came up and, 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 uh, took it fairly gently and quietly, but I heard a little noise and I was like, I think he's eating. And I went over there and, and, uh, so he's, he's doing great. He's doing great. Uh, I'm really excited about him. And yeah, I'd be surprised if I don't end up calling him chunk. I just, I do like it. Nick chunk. Chunk is perfect. <laughs> uh, let's see. Another Patreon question. Nick Moore says, ever thought of doing a video on a salesman dragon? Yes. In fact, if you have a sailfin dragon I can borrow, I would do a sailfin dragon video about whenever. Uh, people are always asking for a sailfin dragon for totally understandable reasons. Uh, sort of like I had a really difficult time finding a healthy adult uh, Chinese water dragon. In, fa in fact, I eventually just went with a juvenile because I couldn't ever find one. Um, you know, if I can find a healthy adult sailfin dragon, for sure. I, I know our local aquarium has them, and I might, I might see if. Uh, they would be interested in in letting us film a video with their dragons. I don't know what they do as far as that goes. Uh, so let's jump to Super Chats. Uh, Bill's Mills says, after quarantine, are you going to still do live stream? That's a great question. Uh, I actually saw that question when it came through, and I was like, oh, I'm excited to answer that. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we're definitely going to do live streams sometimes. I have loved doing these weekly live streams with you guys and, and I, hopefully it's been beneficial for you as well. Um, I, I guess a lot of it is going to depend on, you know, what, what would you guys like? You know, if this is something that you'd like us to keep doing and people will keep coming and watching, then, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably willing to do it. Like it's, it's, I, I love it. It's been really fun at the same time. You know, you, you might want to carry on with your lives. You're like I don't have time for a live stream every single week this guy but uh but we we shall see yeah so yeah let, let me know if you guys would like us to continue these live streams in the future let us know and keep letting us know and you know uh we we will see but but we intend to to keep them up for as as long as we're all stuck inside and hopefully bring a little social interaction to us all awesome uh let's see Larry Hernandez did a super chat, a very nice super chat. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. 20 smackers towards the Cayman Wizard Fund. Have a great weekend, everyone. Please say love life and be kind to at least one person today. Checking out, I guess he took off. But thank you, Larry. I love that. And I didn't know I had a Cayman Lizard Fund, and now I'm way excited because I have a Cayman Lizard Fund. Guys, it's a Cayman Lizard Fund. <laughs> I want to learn so much about building semi-aquatic, like, giant enclosures. You know, I, I plan to do one for the Dumerals. Uh, I plan to do one for the, the common snapping turtle. And, like, like right now, they have fine enclosures, but you can't see them underwater. You know, my, my, what I want to learn about is how to make underwater viewable ponds essentially like that mm, that has always been a dream of mine always all my life uh, it, i i grew up in colorado one of my favorite places in the world is uh a portion of the denver zoo called tropical discovery i i, I grew up loving it and you know uh, when i uh when, when i well on my honeymoon, actually, when when uh, Leisha and I got married, one of the things we did on our honeymoon was we went to the San Diego Zoo. And San Diego Zoo is amazing. And I saw a lot of especially large mammals I'd never seen before in my life. But there was nothing at the San Diego Zoo as rad as Tropical Discovery. And right when you first walk in Tropical Discovery, there is, I mean, if it were in your house, it would be enormous. It's not that big for a zoo. But there was a big old enclosure, just a big glass window. And you could see into this pond and it had freshwater stingrays and turtles and, and things like that cruising around in there. And then there was a land area in the back. That is a dream. And if I could learn how to build those, guys, all of a sudden things like caiman lizards would be just 
absolutely the coolest. That is all. That is all. I have a Cayman uh, Lizard yeah. Fund. Uh, so we are currently caught up on Super Chat, so we should do a uh, speed round. What do you call it? Lightning round. Lightning round. round. Are we ready? This might be, uh, this might be difficult uh, remote. Yes. Oh, no. All right, here we go. Uh, Games Gecko says, "What's your favorite gecko?" Oh, geez, that is not a. That is a uh, okay, right now I am absolutely dying over neon day geckos. They are just unbelievably spectacular, and I love them with all my heart. So right now, neon day geckos have my have my heart. Okay. Facts says, "Hey, I got a leopard gecko because I saw your video." That, that, I think, is still the highest scoring lizard we've ever covered. They're amazing. They're amazing, and I love my leopard geckos. I'm so glad we were able to help uh, you find them. Henry? Oh, go ahead. That's all. That is all. Lightning round. Uh, Mark? Yeah, lightning round. Mark Henry says, it would be cool if I met Clint at the room. Clint, Clint. That would be so much fun. We went to a zoo in, uh, in <laughs> New Zealand. And, you know, so, like... Not a local zoo. And we went to a zoo in Australia. This is what I do when I go to other countries. I just go, what's in their zoo? And at both of those places, I met somebody who knew me from our channel. And so I meet people at zoos. Lightning! I meet you at zoos. I hope to see you there. Yes, that TV dude says, what's your favorite insect? What's, oh, my gosh. Uh, 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 favorite insect. Um, I, I love praying mantises ever so much. They're fantastic, obviously. Dang it. Mm. Zatik Clay says, what is a good larger starter snake? Good larger starter snake? Depends on how big you're talking about, because corn snakes and ball pythons are reasonably large. Um, boas, uh, you know, if you're talking about something a little bit bigger still. Back to insects. Ants are awesome. Who could in how They're so cool. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Lightning. <laughs> Are you a dog or cat person? Uh, yes and no. So I, I like both dogs and cats. I'm, I have a slight allergy to cats. They make me itchy. Um, but I, I actually like them as long as they stay in their dang house. If you're letting them outside, I'm just, it's just killing birds and snakes all day long. That's just what it does. So I hate them outdoors, but I, I love them indoors. Um, dogs, they're, they, they're, uh, I'm an introvert, and so they're very extroverted. And but I also adore them. I, I like I like both of them a lot. I'm I'm just not sure that both of them are for me at all times. Though I have a dog right now. Alexander Higgins says, "Water snake. Do they make a good pet?" Yeah, they're real cool. You know, you gotta you gotta deal with the water feature, and some of them can be biteier, and then they've got anticoagulants in their their saliva, so you might bleed profusely. But uh, they're real cool, and and they're probably. I mean, they're they're also very. They're very brave, you know. And so even in the wild, like you can you can hand feed them fish on the dock. They'll just come up to you and hang out. They're they're very cool. They're very cool snakes. Very cool snakes. Some of them are gloriously beautiful. Uh, D ten D ten says rainbow boa thoughts. Rainbow boa, rainbow boas are awesome. Uh, hydration's a big deal with them, but but they're very beautiful, and we will cover them eventually. Uh, Ashley Murphy says, what do you think about the white tree frogs? White tree frogs? We have a whole video on them, and they're awesome. They're way cool. Uh, Scamander says, Chris, have you read the new Spinosaurus article yet? No, I haven't, but I'd like to. Uh, yeah, send it. Uh, send me a link. Uh, see, Gamma Benkirk says, Benkirk says, can you do a Redfoot versus Russian tortoise video? Probably. Very simply, I could do a Yellowfoot versus Russian tortoise video because I have both of those. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, both of mine are rescues, and so they look a little goofy, both of them. But hey, uh, might might make a fun video. And Yellowfoots and Redfoots are real. Uh, a number of people are asking if tegus are good beginner pets. Hmm. If a giant lizard is a good pet for you. 
then Otegu is probably the best one. But, you know, that is, that's a pretty serious commitment to jump straight into. The other thing is, even though they tend to be pretty nice, they also have got some substantial weapons. And so if you're not pretty good at reading lizard behavior, uh, you might end up on the wrong side of those weapons at some point. Uh, let's see. Brittany Pat asks, do you have a favorite color? Do I have a favorite color? Uh, yeah, but it varies. Uh, I like blue a lot. I like gray on cars and things, and uh, purple, but not on cars. <laughs> uh, let's see. Somebody asked earlier if you have a favorite insect. If I, another, another favorite insect question? Well, that's, maybe I already asked that one. Yes, you did, but I've been, I've been waffling about it. Uh, how about, well, well, this time it'll be scorpion flies. Let's talk about scorpion flies for now. They're awesome. If you don't know what they are, you need to Google them. Uh, Hip to the Square says, Clint, you look so dashingly handsome in a t-shirt. Well, thank you. You guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you see that t-shirt, by the way, that I was wearing? Sit tight, sit tight. Stay there. Yes, the T-shirt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can actually put it in. I'm we. See if I can come this is my, this is my new T-shirt. It just arrived the other day, and Michelle designed this. She actually has designed a number of them in this sort of amazing watercolor style, and you can see like there's an amazing picture. It's not the water that's false, and then on the back. Well, hi there, and. And, and we always, when we do a new Teespring shirt, we, we try to order one in to make sure that the quality is acceptable, you know, because if you guys are buying them, we want to make sure you're happy with it. Michelle did all sorts of research into, like, how these shirts are actually made so that you can optimize it and make it, like, the best possible outcome. This shirt is amazing. So, you know, like, the... The, the, all of this is super soft. Like it doesn't feel rubbery at all. It feels basically just like the normal cloth. And then it's got the, the image and the image looks just perfect. Michelle worked so hard to make these. And this obviously has one of my favorite snakes in the whole wide world on it. And they're awesome. They're awesome. So like, if you want your own, you can go to our, our Teespring store and, and order one that we have not just this design, but several different animals. And more in the future. Like if you have a video, you're like, I would like for Michelle to make a shirt like that about this animal. Let us know because she's got amazing talents. She and, and Will, her husband, have have uh, been the creators of almost all of our, our shirts. One of them was actually generated by Teespring and, and one of them by a fan, the the one with uh, the the Black Widow. So, but yeah, they're awesome. And I'm, I'm super excited about that t-shirt. Obviously, I actually pinned the uh, the link into the live chat. Oh, perfect! Check that out there. Perfect. There it is. Awesome. Are we still right. on lightning? Uh, or are we calling it a day? Are tarantulas good starters? Um, some of them. Some of them. Uh, some of them are not. It just depends on the the tarantula species. Uh, this will be a little spoiler, but uh, something involving tarantulas this way comes. Yes, it's coming soon. Uh, what size enclosure do you need for a Kenyan sand boa? Uh, Kenyan sand boa? It's going to depend a lot, mm -hmm. male or female. Um, you know, a, a male honestly is a snake that you could keep in a ten gallon. Um, probably something like a twenty gallon long would be excellent. Floor space obviously matters way more, way more than does. Sorry, just a second. I'm trying to keep a lizard and a dog separated. Uh, floor space obviously matters way more than does uh, vertical space. They don't really climb at all. If you had too big of an enclosure for a male Kenyan sand boa, you might not ever find him. <laughs> he just disappeared. No, yeah, you're a good boy. You're a good boy, Mr. T. Uh, what do you uh, think? says, what do you think about lizard leashes? Lizard leashes? Um, if you're going to bring your lizard outdoors, they're a great idea. Um, you know, some lizards take a little getting used to it, but you know, a lizard could just bolt on you and then what are you going to do? 
you know, or it goes under something. And so if you can have a, a lizard on a leash, then it's not going to get lost. And that allows them to get some like full, full spectrum natural sunlight. And so there's a lot of, a lot of good reasons just for the lizard's benefit to bring them outside uh, from time to time. But having them on some sort of a leash is a great idea. I've got, I've got Gus Gus uh, leash trained and he does great. Even the Dumeril's monitor, uh, he's actually, I've, I've taken him out on a leash a number of times. So they, they do really well. Love it. We should probably start wrapping things up. Okay, okay. Do we want to have three more questions or something? Okay, three more. Three uh, more. Keith Payne says, uh, which do you like better, heat mats or radiant heat panels? Uh, probably radiant heat panels, but uh, you know, sometimes that can be cost prohibitive, and it's just going to depend on the size of the enclosure. On a big enclosure, radiant heat panel. On a small enclosure, probably heat mat. Uh, Bob Armour says, "Hey Clint, I love your videos. Could you help me decide between a blue tongue sink and a crested gecko? Oh, I already have two videos, and I'm ready for my next reptile." Okay, well, it it really depends on what you want. You know, if you want a, a lizard that's very practical as far as size and really reasonable to care for, crested gecko's really hard to beat. Um, if you're if you're ready for a bigger enclosure and a little bit more extensive work, you know, just in diet and things like that, a blue tongue skink is just one of the most fun reptiles you could possibly have. Uh, I mean, you know, they're, you can they're so handleable and they're just really awesome. They're really awesome. So you can't miss with either of them. the The blue tongue is definitely the bigger commitment of the two, but it's also um, really fun. And uh, the last question is from Harley, uh, will you do a parrot video? Yeah.